All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of an interesting gel test video today. Um, if you can see all the stuff down there, I just wrapped up doing uh, this rimfire video on pop bottles and watermelons, uh, 22 long rifle, 17 HMR there, and 22 Magnum. Now I was planning, and I'm, I'm still gonna be doing this, so just a little heads up here, a little insider information, something to stay tuned. I got uh, some specialized 22 gel tests coming up. I don't want to say too much because I don't want anyone copying me before I can get them out or anything. But you see all this crap, and there was going to be a theme to it. Uh, I was going to break it up into three different videos, and each video would have a different theme. So I have that coming. Stay tuned for that. But instead of doing that today, um, I had the idea since I just did the 17 HMR, 22 long rifle, and, and uh, 22 mag there against these two, I thought, well... You know, it'd be fun actually to see what those three with the specific ammo that I use, which I'll show you guys in a second, would do in these gel blocks. So that's what I'm going to do here today. So in those videos, I used CCI Stinger for the 22 long rifle. And then because I went uh, just about as high as velocity as you can get in 22 long rifle, yes, there is one or two faster, but this is on like the top three or four of highest velocity you can get. I followed that trend with the 22 mag and the 17 HMR. So for the 22 mag, I used the uh, VMAX 30 grain ballistic tip, 2200 feet per second advertised. And then for the 17 HMR, I used these A17s. They are advertised at 2650, which somewhere along the line last year, I did put some of these over the chrono and they are in the 2600 feet per second range. So uh, that's not marketing BS. They are faster. So let's put these in the gel block and see how they compare in ballistics gelatin instead of just cantaloupes, watermelons, and pop bottles. All right, so I just have the block set up here on the table. This is 10% Knox Ballistics Gelatin. Uh, the stuff does need temperature controlled. Optimal temperature is 39 degrees, but these come straight out of my fridge, which is 38 to 39 degrees. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but it is January in Ohio. It is currently about 34 or 35 degrees, uh, so no issues there with the temperature. They did have a short car ride on the way here, um, but I mean they're in those containers and whatnot, but even if they did warm up just a hair on the way here, uh, we've been out here for about an hour and a half filming other videos, so they've been sitting out the entire time, so they've certainly had time to chill off and be below 40 degrees, which is right where you want them. But anyways, I'm just going to leave you guys set up down here with the camera. Uh, there won't be a whole lot to see from up there, so you know, down here you can see some see the entries and maybe the blocks will dance around and jump for you a little bit who knows and i'll try to position the camera around to the other side to try to kind of catch all the shots on camera for you guys there now but anyways i'm gonna walk back up there and get started and by the way this is about 15 yards all right so in order we'll be firing from left to right 22 long rifle then 22 magnum and then 17 hmr Looking good so far. I'll show you guys in a second. I'm going to swing around to the other side for the last shot, the 17 HMR. Which, by the way, if I failed to mention, in order, 22 long rifle, 22 magnum, and then up next, 17 HMR. All right, there's the entry on all three. Uh, as I said, 22 long rifle on the left, 22 magnum center, 17 HMR off to the right, distance of 15 yards. Got some interesting results. So, <laughs> uh, you can see the difference in cavities, and man, look at that 17 HMR. Um, but our 22 magnum and 17 HMR, due to these being uh, very, uh, explosive if you will bullets um, very shallow penetration and then the 22 long rifles clear out here uh, but you can see the much larger cavities you get from those two now had I used say a traditional 40 grain hollow point uh, through the 22 magnum there we would have got a lot more penetration uh, if I used the 20 grain hollow point for the 17 HMR I believe it would have got more penetration 
And actually, I think for 17 at least, I do believe I did a 17 grain ballistic tip versus the 20 grain hollow point. Um, I'll put a link in the description for that video as well if you want to go check that out. One of my older videos and one of my earlier gel tests, so quality is not going to be quite the same as the video here today. But if you want to check it out, I'll link that in the description. Um, so let me get some measurement on these real quick. I'll try to hold them up, see if we can see it better from different angles of light and whatnot. And uh, we'll extract them and see what we got left in there. So the Stinger, the 22 long rifle, it's coming in just a little bit. It depends on how I hold this camera. You see how I can go like that? It looks like it's 11 inches, and now it looks like it's 10 inches. Um, but to my eyes, and not through the camera, it's coming in oh, about 10 and a half. So, let's see here, 22 mag came in right about six, six inches there. And well, the 17 HMR is pretty much the same depth. It looks like it got another quarter inch, six and a quarter, six and a half. There, I flipped it over, so that's from the bottom. So now the order is reversed. This is your 22 long rifle here, the Stinger. Then that's the 22 Magnum, which actually split this here. And then that would make that your 17 HMR. There's from the bottom with some light going through it, so you can see them a little bit better there. So, 22 long rifle on your right there. This is the way they came in, the way I had the block setting. 22 long rifle now on the left. Now I've done several other 17 HMR and 22 Magnum uh, gel test on the channel uh, 22 long rifle as well and I've done them both uh, 22 mag and 22 long rifle from not only rifles but pistols as well uh, so if you guys want to go check those out way too many links for me to post so go ahead and just check out the 22 slash rimfire playlist on the channel uh, for quick access to all those that way you're not having to scroll through 900 videos looking for them and just a heads up for what's to come, I've been working on testing all those, like I just mentioned, uh, close range. I tested way more than I did here today. Uh, but here, somewhat in the near future, I'm going to start doing longer range gel tests with uh, those cartridges out to 50, 100, and even beyond eventually. Uh, so stay tuned to look forward to those. All right, so there's the bullets there. Remember, this is upside down from the way we hit it. I got it flipped here to dig these out. It was a little easier that way. So this would be the 22 long rifle, the Stinger, the 22 Magnum, the 17 HMR. Um, there is still some jacket in there from the 22 Mag. You can see jacket down in there as well from the 17 HMR. But this is mostly what was left. Uh, this little piece I dug out right there from the 22 Mag. So that's what's left of them and I actually have my scale on me so we get a retained weight so you'll see why they didn't penetrate so far because uh, the stinger sorry for the dirty fingernails by the way it's muddy out here I've been picking crap up and washing mud off this table and whatnot stingers mostly complete and whole there uh, 22 mag I mean there's a good chunk left there but it's pretty shredded and then the 17 HMR pretty shredded as well so let me get these up there and we'll get a retained weight on this all right so your retained weight on the stinger here 23.1 now remember that's a 32 grain bullet so only 23 of it's left there but that's probably the best ratio we got there today the magnum only 13 grains left of that what's that yeah 13.9 out of the 30 grain bullet so less than half Whereas the Stinger is about two-thirds, roughly. And then the 17 HMR, 7.9 grains. Uh, so way less than half there on that. So that's why your penetration suffered there on your 17 HMR and 22 Magnum. Because those specific bullets at those velocities, they were just so explosive. Uh, they kind of you know, fragmented and they shed a lot of their jacket and lead and whatnot. So there wasn't a whole lot left of them that penetrate the block but very explosive damage due to that, however. You know, that's at 15 yards there, so uh, out there, 50, 100 or more, um, obviously they're not gonna hit as hard because they're gonna be going slower by that distance, so they're gonna hold together better, but that's part of the reason why I wanna start doing 50, 100 yard and beyond gel tests, which like I said, I will eventually get to, but those will be some interesting results for sure uh, when I get around to that. Some of those, uh, 
they're fragmenting up here at 15 yards but you know out at 100 they're probably going to stay together pretty well so you'll get a lot more penetration although the wound cavity probably won't be quite as large because you're not going to have quite the explosive impact uh, from the velocity being lower at uh, further distances there now but anyways like i said this was just kind of a spur of the moment thing here i thought it would be fun to test these since we just did the pop bottles and the watermelons with the exact same setup so i thought it'd be interesting to see what they did in the gel and that's what they do there at 15 yards uh, like i said those videos uh, the pop and the uh, watermelons we just did with these i'll have links in the description for those if you want to go check those out i also put up links for you if you guys want to see review videos on these rifles Ruger 1022, Rossi RS22M, and uh, Savage 93. I'll put a link in the description of those too if you want to see the reviews on these. I also have uh, three and 400 yard videos of the 17 HMR and the 22 Magnum. Um, but for those, just go ahead and check out the 22 slash Rimfire playlist on the channel uh, for quick access to those. If you guys want to get yourself any of the products you see me use in the videos, like some of the steel targets I have out here, uh, the scale, uh, earphones I wear, wear shooting bag, um, micrometer, caliper, targets I use, and more. Links in the description for those. If you guys want to help support the channel so you can keep videos like these coming and more, consider leaving a super thanks. But with that, I want to thank you guys for stopping by and checking this one out, and I hope to see you on the next one.